We're going to start this lab video with a general discussion of pH, pK, buffers, etc., and then move on later in the video to apply this idea of acid-base balance to the body. So here's a little review of the chemistry you will need to know. Buffers are solutions that help to resist changes in pH. Buffers are most effective when the concentration of the acid component and the anion component are equal. The pK of a buffer is the pH at which the concentrations of those two components are equal, and each buffer system has a unique pK. Buffers reversibly bind to hydrogen ion, and in the body they minimize changes in pH but do not prevent them. If there is an increase in hydrogen ion, then the buffer will bind to the hydrogen and the reaction will move in the forward direction. If there is a decrease in the hydrogen ion concentration, then the reaction will move in the opposite direction to keep the pH balanced. Now let's take a look at our good old titration curve. In this titration, we're adding a known base, NaOH, to an acidic solution. At the beginning, there will be a high concentration of acid, but as the base reacts with the acid, more anion will be produced. The point in the middle where the concentrations of the acid and the anion are the same are what we call the pK. Remember that the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation shows that the pH of a solution is determined by the pKa of the acid and the ratio of the hydrogen ion and the conjugate base. In the body, many buffering systems work together to maintain pH. This idea is called the isohydric principle. The major buffering systems of the body include bicarbonate, phosphate, and protein. Out of all of these buffering systems, the bicarbonate buffer system is the most important. Here on the screen, the reaction of the system is displayed. There are a few reversible steps in this system. CO2 and water can react to become carbonic acid, and hydrogen ion and bicarbonate can react to do the same. Carbonic acid can dissociate to become carbon dioxide and water, or to become hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. This reaction will be important to understand as we discuss how bicarbonate and carbon dioxide affect the pH of the body. The primary regulator of carbon dioxide gas in the arterial blood is lung ventilation, whereas the kidneys are the primary regulators of arterial blood bicarbonate concentration. There are four basic disorders that we see when looking at this balance in pH, which is regulated by the kidneys and the lungs. Acidosis is caused by either abnormally high concentrations of CO2 or very low concentrations of bicarbonate. The former is called respiratory acidosis and the latter is called metabolic acidosis. Alkalosis, which means that a system is basic, is caused by either low CO2 concentration or a high bicarbonate concentration. The former is called respiratory alkalosis and the latter is called metabolic alkalosis. So when looking at all this information, or when looking at results from a patient, how can we tell which disorder a patient has? Focus in on the last two columns on this chart showing the pH and the levels of bicarbonate. It is easy to tell whether a system is in acidosis or alkalosis. The pH tells us that. But when we compare the high or low level of bicarbonate to the high or low pH, remember the mnemonic, metabolic mimics, respiratory is reversed. Of course, this is referring to the direction of the arrows in these last two columns. In metabolic disorders, a low pH would also have a low bicarbonate concentration, and a high pH would have a high bicarbonate concentration. The arrows, however, would go the opposite way for respiratory disorders.